We're live. Yeah. What do you know? Hello, Hello hey, and welcome up? to Up at Noon Live. I'm your host, Brian Altano. With me is Max Scoville. Uh, up at Noon is or was a weekly live pop culture comedy variety hour that we've done right here on IGN, YouTube, Twitch, and Mixer. And because the world has gone awry, it's back. So uh, thank you for your support for all the time. And thank you for being uh, home, safe, and quarantined, because uh, this gives us a good excuse to bring the show back. How are you feeling, Max, all things I'm considered? I'm feeling pretty good. This is, this is good. This is a nice light at the end of the tunnel. A, a cheers, a good, my good man. I believe that um, 5 p.m. on a Friday is a fundamentally more fun time than 11 a.m. on a Thursday. So cheers to that. Uh, I agree. This is, I don't know, this is a good show right now. I feel like it's a lot more fun to talk about, uh, I don't know, Lego pirates and Star Wars aliens and Animal Crossing than it is to talk about, you know, whether or not the unreleased, un unannounced video game console will be delayed or affected by, like, real-world events. Like, that doesn't, that's, the news is a thing that has to exist, but maybe we should talk about other things instead. <laughs> I agree. Uh, and so to, we have a jam-packed show for you guys today. First of all, I want to give a gigantic shout out to one of the most supportive communities we've ever had, and that is the good people of Fiji. I don't know if any of them have ever seen the show or how any of that works, but it is noon in Fiji right now. And so just by the nature of them being alive during this time exactly, uh, congrats and thank you guys for celebrating the time period of noon. Yes. And our, our, um, our goal with this show is to become the number one uh, daytime talk show in Fiji. That's right. It's, I did actually... It, I did a little bit of research on Fiji uh, on the way in this morning, on the way to my, my computer chair, and I found out that uh, Fiji is actually a country that's made of, of tons of tiny little islands. So it's not even really like one big place. It's just like a bunch of small plates. It's sort of like tapas. Like when you go yes. to dinner and you just have like little appetizers and you call it a meal. Yes, an island chain. That's exactly like tapas. <laughs> that's, a good, that's an apt comparison. According to IMDb, uh, Fiji, uh, the seven most popular, and I don't know how they're ranking this, but the seventh most popular movie in Fiji, and I don't know if that means in history or now, uh, is Elf Bowling, the movie. And Elf Bowling actually inspired a Nintendo DS game, which IGN gave a one out of ten. And we called it Ho Ho Horrible. I think I, I think I vaguely remember that. I feel like we did a roundup of the worst games of one particular year or something, but... Yep. We should, I mean, honestly, also, you know, if this, if this show really takes off in Fiji, we should probably do a Let's Play of that. Maybe do a re-review. We should make David Staple and give it a new score. I agree. I think that Elf Bowling 1 and 2 is the official game of Up at Noon and the official game of Fiji. <laughs> Fiji is also known for water. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's okay. We're cool. We're having we're, a good we're time. In there. We're figuring this out. If there are any weird technical difficulties, that is because there are probably going to be weird technical difficulties. So everyone watching at home, at home, anywhere, including Fiji, just uh, just hang in there. Um, let's get down to business. Let's get down to brass tacks. Let's talk about the most important hard-hitting stuff, which is Animal Crossing right now. Let's get to it. Damn right. Uh, as you can see, you can probably see a little glimpse of my house if you're watching the show right now. Uh, I not only got the game a little bit early, but I'm also a filthy time pirate and i go all around the universe through time and space to get cool objects and items you were a time bandit we actually uh we're gonna sh we're gonna give a little virtual tour of our respective hometowns uh but i figured it's sort of in the interest of community and good faith if anyone is playing uh animal crossing at home we are both connected to the internet and we have codes for you to come visit we have dodo codes ready to go here's mine if you want to come to my island, St. Danzig, it is L... I'm reading this backwards. L-T-M-F-7-R. Yeah, and, and mine, mine is 987-F-0. I think this is, this is how prisoners communicate with each other. I think we're <laughs> in a long-distance relationship, Brian. <laughs> yeah, we are. Uh, so for, con for context, Max, I haven't seen you in almost two weeks. This is, this is how we communicate now. We used to be best friends that would sit next to each other uh, for, I, I don't know, what, 70 hours a week? Hang yeah, out? I think we, we, did, we did the math one time. We figured out that with, especially with like work travel and trips and stuff, we spent more, times with each, more time with each other than we did with our uh, wives. Yeah, which exactly. Is, exactly. Uh, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's, very, it's been very odd having to do this from afar. But one of the things that I think has been connecting all of us uh, 
and not just you and I, but the entire world right now is Animal Crossing. It is uh, inescapable on social media. It's I think it's one of the most sort of like uh, concentrated like laser beams of positivity I think I've ever seen coming out of the video game industry. It's been uh, a warm blanket, <laughs> you know, it's just been absolutely wonderful to see. And I think what, what really kicks ass about Animal Crossing is that it's uh, every single person is playing the game just a little bit differently. They're customizing a little bit differently. Um, that's, that's the thing that I don't think I ever fully grasped about it is exactly how, like how much you make it your own, you know? Right. And it's, it's so cool to see everyone's different approach to it. Like some people get very cute and like very fashionable or they try to be like, this is my perfect dollhouse. And some people are like, welcome to hell. <laughs> <laughs> so we actually, uh, Max and I actually put together a little gallery of uh, some of the sort of like like nonsense and buffoonery that we've been getting into in Animal Crossing. Uh, and we hope yeah. you'll share yours. Uh, use the hashtag, hashtag up at noon uh, and hit us up on Twitter or uh, tweet at us or uh, yeah, just leave a comment on Twitch or YouTube or Mixer uh, or IGN.com, wherever you're watching the show. So yeah, we're going to go through some screenshots right now. We have also our- just a quick update. I have very bad news for everyone who lives on my island. Uh, they're getting a visit from my very first Mr. Popular, Death. <laughs> so that's that's menacing. Death is visiting my island. Uh, but yeah, let's take a look at this. This is so. This is you. This is your um. This is your Animal Crossing setup. Uh, I you, you like you said you got the game a lot early, and also you cheated. So I didn't cheat. Really, it's not cheating. It's not. It's not. It's not an esport. It's not okay. real. It's, you committed. You committed a crime against uh, against God by uh, arranging the cosmos to get things. Why? What? This is this, okay. First of all, I I I completely disagree that time traveling is cheating. It's if you were you're you're just as okay. So is Marty McFly a cheater? I don't know. He almost makes out with his mom. That seems like not a good thing. It's not good. I mean, all right. Show me your stupid house. Show me your dumb. Okay. Tell me about so, this house. So uh, what I did here was I basically took. Uh, I'm a big sneakerhead, and I realized uh, one of the weird things about being in quarantine is that sneakers don't really matter anymore because no one sees them on me anymore. So I don't like o- like I'm not going to wear and I'm not going to wear sneakers in my apartment. And so uh, yeah, so I basically mounted a bunch of sneakers on my wall, and then I took. Uh, an Animal Crossing texture creator, and I made a bunch of album covers uh, of some of my favorite hip-hop albums of all time, and I put them up on the wall as framed pictures, which you can do, um, which I imagine you can also use for evil if you wanted to put Panguses and you yeah. know, Eurytras and such. No, I, I love, uh, you know, we, we, there's the old argument about whether or not time travel is in fact illegal or whatever, or <laughs> you know, against the rules, and it's not sanctioned by Nintendo, and it's not encouraged by the game, but neither is using a QR code generator. I think Janet Garcia from IGN's Wikis pointed that out, which is like, it's a fair point, and we both are guilty of using, uh, you know, third-party stuff to make cool rap album covers and posters and whatnot. But you know what I noticed, Max? When you came to visit my town and I gave you a bunch of stuff, you had no problem taking the spoils of a time traveler. So I, that's didn't know, I didn't know you were a time traveler. I thought <laughs> you just honestly did all that just early. I didn't know you. I, I, this is my first Animal Crossing. I didn't. I was like, yeah, this seems like a thing you could accomplish in ten days. And looking at it now, I'm like, no, nah, you're a you're a filthy sneak. <laughs> so live and learn, I guess. You can hold that argument to Judge Judy. This is an alcoholic yeah. deer that lives in my yeah, town. Speaking of Judge Judy, who's this? This is Bam. He's an alcoholic deer. Um, he is uh, a huge wreck. He's just constantly walking around talking about working out, but I've never actually seen him work out. So he's one of those dudes. It's always just like, oh, I'm going to the gym, but he, you don't, you know, he doesn't actually go. I think he like he takes a picture of his membership, but doesn't actually like walk in and start working out. So this is him. He was sitting under a tree drinking like a real, you know, uh, who's that dude? Rip Van Winkle. <laughs> <laughs> that dude, yeah, that that guy is a hundred percent. That's a that's the street drunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's like keep that. going. Yeah. What uh, this was an amazing moment. I found. Uh, I feel like this is like somebody doing like a like you you get kidnapped. Somebody comes to your house and they show you all photos that they took on a vacation. Uh, so the Maple Sisters set up shop in my town, and I walk by and it looked like the Castro Street Fair. This dude is selling a straight up gimp, just a leather <laughs> leather daddy outfit. <laughs> Yeah, I like that they got, like, the nice yarn in the corner and some ribbons and, like, a little bit of quilt. And then it's also like, but, yeah, you want to get rough? You want to get nasty? Go for it. Go nuts. Yep, yep. <laughs> uh, and then, let's see. Who is – I like this. This is cute. This is Eugene. He's my spirit animal. I tried to give him all sorts of wares and such to get him to stay, but he did not. He was just camping out in the tent for a little while. Um, so I came over and I hung out with him. I think he's, like, going to town on a BLT, it looks like. 
That does look like a BLT, or just like a cheese and tomato and lettuce sandwich. I don't know. Doesn't it? Doesn't it look like HR Giger made all the sleeping bags in this game? Yeah, I think like the it's weird how like the the sleeping bags and then some of the furniture and then all of the fish and bugs are like way too realistic and everything else is like cute and nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, so what? This was my um. This was my my uh, coronavirus. Uh, uh, quarantine chamber. It's got toilet paper and canned canned uh, sauces and various this spices. Like, this looks like a poster for an A twenty four movie. This is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't I didn't have a TV at the time. TVs are like really hard to get in this game for some stupid reason, and or they're, or they're rare. They're like rarer drops. And so I just put a, an hourglass in there to illustrate what it's like to live in this modern world now, where all we do is wait. Do you have a TV at all, or like in real life? No, in, in the game. I know you have a yeah. TV in real life. Yeah, so it took me forever to find a t that TV in the game. Um, it's a 50-inch flat-screen TV, but it has a red bezel. Oh, that's awful. I have, like, a really... I have, like, a little like a little crappy, like, you know, 30-inch, like, what, like, kitchen TV. Oh, and that's all it, nice. All it shows is, like, Fox News and police chases. <laughs> <laughs> like, you turn it on, and it's just, like, it's just, like, cable news, and then it's, like, car commercials or... Cop chases? I don't know. Um, but let's move on here. We actually got to hang out. Uh, this was the best. Like, yeah, this is great. This was like this was honestly like sort of the first sort of glimmers of like I don't know like this was this was this game like bringing hope and like and niceness. The fact that like we both like sort of I don't know FaceTimed each other on our actual phones and then we were like you were like come visit my island. This is the day it came out. I came over and we like we like ran around picked fruit. You gave me a bunch of a bunch of dumb stuff like a cool older brother. So like. It's really sweet. Um, and I figured also, also, yeah, that's that's your code there. If you want to come back to here, I'll put it up again. Yeah, if you want to come through. Yeah, come on by. It's I know it probably lags a bunch for people if you kind of get... Uh, there we go. Hey, Max, and I want to point out something else. We both uh, wrote our codes on dog stuff. Can we take a look at the dog stuff that we did? That's right. And this is a happy birthday card that my kid's daycare did that then she drew all over. And it, look at this. Look at this horrible. <laughs> that looks oh, like some no. kind of Bloodborne, right? Oh, that's awful. Um, and that, that cat up there looks like a roast turkey. That's nasty. All yeah. right, so let's come uh, through. So you have something, one more thing really I want to show off real quick. You have a Godzilla. Mm -hmm. Like, I, sh I really should have guessed that you were, like, cheating. I thought it was just, like, a good economy in, in you know, in Animal it's Crossing. Not it's not cheating. Okay, I, I, it's faster than saying time travel. <laughs> It's even longer to explain that it's faster to say something. All right. <laughs> anyway, here's my stuff. Here's one of the things you gave me. You gave me a snack machine. That's great, because up until that point, I'd just been eating burnt coconuts on the beach like a weirdo. Uh, so now I have lots of, uh, if you look closely, actually, some of those candy bars got stuck, so that sucks. And I, um, I, listen, to, <laughs> I listen to K.K. Slider's drum and bass mix from that radio up there, which has weird, a weird place to put a radio. But I like but, uh, where you, did you put, did you put the raccoon I gave you outside of your house? Yeah, yeah. For a while, I was trying to worship him, but I worked out something even better than that, which I'll show you in a second. Um, can I, can I really, ask you? Can I ask you why you have gasoline so close to that fire? What is wrong with you? For burning things. It's also um, uh, Conry zero one in the Twitch chat says is duping cheating? Yes, if you item dupe, that's absolutely cheating. But also, it doesn't count because it's not an esport. It's not real. It don't you have fun. Dude, there's like you know, one, there's, there's like one enemy in the game, and it's a it's a tarantula that makes you like go to sleep at your house. It's like not even. Yeah, there's a there's actually I'm gonna this uh, IGN doesn't want me to talk about this, but I'm gonna drop an exclusive cheat right now. Right behind, um, if you use a shovel and you dig up right behind Blathers' uh, museum, there's a handgun, and you can use it to get any item in the game. <laughs> All right. Anyway, let me show you the rest of my sleep here. Sometimes I go behind my house to do stuff, you know, you gotta go back there. <laughs> caught! <laughs> Who caught I got, you? I what got my guess. Uh huh? What are you doing to the bush? I'm doing stuff back there. I was in the middle of doing some business. You asked me you asked me, before we before we went live, you were like, Oh, I got you a toilet, I'll mail it to you. And I was like, that's good because I've been, you know, using a bucket. It's not the same. Oh, is that what um, you're peeing back there, huh? It doesn't look like it. Uh, let's see. And then I have, uh, I got a gerbil. <laughs> Wait, was it, is uh, that a, is that a catchable animal? No, you have, it's weird that it's not. It's just, it exists <laughs> like, 
Uh, actually, Jobert, who works in our uh, who works on our, our news videos, sent it to me in the mail, and he was like, the the message said, "Don't feed him after midnight," and I was like, "This could get weird," and it was just a gerbil, and I was like, well, "All right," and now I have oh, him, and, and I put him on my on my orange crate, which I like because it the orange box reminds me of the box from Metal Gear Solid Two. Is that a um, is that, are those Russian oranges? It says Orvidge. <laughs> I don't know if you notice this, but all the typography is complete and utter gibberish, which uh, you'll actually see it really closely in the middle. Uh, one problem with owning a gerbil is sometimes it gets out and makes a horrible mess on the road. <laughs> um, is that what is that? A, is that a P? Oh, no, you made the monkey. Oh, yeah, no. So I actually, like I was saying, we have a very, we have a strict, we have a lot of folk traditions and deities here in, uh, in, in St. Danzig. Um, actually, if you can look closely, check out. <laughs> I made this based on my real life monkey blanket, <laughs> which is there. That's, that's it. That's this one of the actual, worst things I've ever... The, that's my the, actual monkey blanket. That's, that's it. <laughs> so I have it in, I like Animal Crossing. It's a good game. <laughs> <laughs> the, the t-shirts with the torches underneath that's one of the worst things i've ever seen oh it looks so, i love it so much max it looks so horrible on a tank no, they're, top they're beautiful because it's like no matter where in the room you go it's like they're both looking straight at you they're just both eyes you like that skull city player i gave you right i think it's very good I, I use it to listen to kk slider's drum and bass remix album it's very why do you keep saying that Stop it's saying the only that. album i have i'm waiting on the flamenco guitar it should show up tomorrow i like that the skull opens up and you can put it it's like it has a, a cd inside it looks like something that would have come with like the you know terminator one on vhs or some crap yeah seriously god that's uh, amazing all right, so moving on. Uh, I also, I don't know how to tell you this, but I'm kind of goth here on St. Danzig. I like to be a M Misfits fan, and I have, uh, I have a goth mirror that I look into. Uh, oh, you do, you do, you change your clothes in there? What is the, what's, the, okay, there's, so there's a lot going on in this picture, and all of it is opposite of itself. Oh, no, I will get to that in the next part in a moment. In addition to being goth, sometimes I like to dress up like Dr. Hot Dogs, my favorite character. <laughs> <laughs> and I watched my favorite show, Police Chases, and I watched Night of the Living Dead on 8mm, and I have daiquiris out of a coffee mug. What is that photo? What is that? That's, is a that shot from, that's a shot from Night of the Living Dead. I tried, like, Nosferatu, and, and it, this, I, I don't know, it's weird. I was thinking Zapruder film, but maybe that's too bleak for Animal Crossing. God, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, um, yeah hey, so can you do me a favor? Never wear... Uh, boots and, and a hot dog again <laughs> uh, you want to guess what's underneath that hot dog not much buddy <laughs> <laughs> that's i had a friend yeah. i don't know if i should tell this story i'm not gonna tell this story <laughs> i don't think we need to tell that story no, um, but yeah so yeah, animal crossing <laughs> is magic i love it so much it's it's such a wonderful good time it's really really good i want to talk specifically about like why it's so special right now real quick and i think that the reason I think the reason Animal Crossing is so special right now is because we are all trapped inside. Um, and that's an, easy, that's an easy way to explain. That's a very quick shorthand for what's happening right now. A lot of us are trapped inside, and those of us who aren't um, maybe kind of should be or should be thinking about doing that pretty soon. And so Animal Crossing represents uh, a world that's uh, not only bright and colorful, but also the more work you put into your home, the bigger it gets. Whereas I feel like no matter how big your house is right now, it still sort of feels like an enclosed space that you're not really allowed to escape from too much. You know, the more work I put in my Animal Crossing town and my house, the more beautiful it gets. And whereas I feel like the four corners of, of my living room are shrinking constantly. Um, there's also the fact that uh, it's a world where people are still outside walking around handing each other stuff. And it's not a problem, you know, like the good I old mean, days. They're sort of handing each other stuff, but also they don't have fingers. So, like, who's to say what they're doing with those little things? That's true. I don't know if they have to wash their hands for 30 seconds if they just have, like, bumps. I mean, the thing that I've really enjoyed specifically about New Horizons is that it's a game about going outside and being with your friends which are two things we're not really able to do these days. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and it's, it's sort of like, it's sort of like this thing where you can, you can go to the store and it's okay. The B-roll here that we're showing, that guy's town is a mess. I would have picked up all those weeds. I don't know how you are with weeds. Um, 
but the uh like you can go shopping in this game and it doesn't feel scary you know like you can you can order stuff from a cat you can order stuff online and it shows up the next day instead of two weeks later um there's a lot of stuff that's happening right now that's like scary and weird and i think it's like really special to have this sort of like little corner of the world that you can like kind of peer into on your switch and feel a little bit better about things you know it's it's a pleasant distraction it's it's I mean, even when it even when it rains it's it feels like you can go outside and catch rare fish and make money and stuff i mean real life is on nightmare mode right now and they have a game where it's like the most the most difficult thing is the tarantula which will chase you down and put you to sleep. It's like, even that's not that bad, you know? Like, it's kind of, <laughs> it's just very, like, it's it's just the right amount of resistance and just the right amount of, like, engagement and keeping you busy, you know? Um, but it's, I don't know, I feel like there's, I, I've had, like, I've had, I've hung out with friends in this game. It's like, I've hung out, hung out with you and we just, like, yeah. Like, it's the kind of thing when you, when you try to explain what it, exactly you do with friends, it's really hard to to kind of quantify that, but I feel like Animal Crossing manages to gamify that without really gamifying it. No, that's a really good way of putting it, because I've seen a lot of people, and I've been playing this franchise since the GameCube version, which, like, not to get dark, but that game came out in 2001, and I was living in New York City, and so there was another sort of massive cataclysmic event that I was dealing with, and in the same way I used the game then for escapism, I, I have now, and uh, I've seen people over the last few decades be like, so what do you even do in this game? And I think you just nailed it because it's sort of like explaining like, so what do you even do with your friends? Like, what do you do? Mm-hmm. Or what do you, what do you do on a Saturday when you're home? You know, like maybe you do some like hobby stuff. Maybe you like work on music. Maybe you paint. Maybe you move your furniture around. Maybe you clean your apartment. Maybe you go shopping. You know, maybe you do some yard work. Maybe you just eat up just like fourteen peaches and see what happens, you know. I mean, if you ever like, watch how like little kids hang out, you see this. You've got a you've got a two year old. Like it's, they're you know it's simple. They're like, I gave you the thing. They're like, or like, hi, I'm here, and they just kind of like yeah. look at each other and like it, it's not like, you know, they don't really have rousing discussions of things. But Animal Crossing is like, it's all like simple enough sort of transactional like engagements with people. And it also occurred to me that you could 100 percent play schoolyard games in here. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you, you could play hide and seek. You could do scavenger hunts. Uh, you know, you could, you, like, you could. The fact that it's a game that, like, it has support for multiplayer, but it isn't like forced. It isn't like it isn't score based. It's more like honor system. Right, right. Like you know, like playing at recess. Well, so there's a really cool thing that happened um, in the GameCube version. One of the things they got rid of that you actually would have loved was uh, the GameCube version had a town dump. <laughs> which was basically just like this lot where you would check it every single day or periodically throughout the day. Um, and random ass stuff would just appear. Uh, I saw a couple of people on YouTube saying my code wasn't working. That is a zero, not an O. Uh, I see lots of people come into the game. So yeah, come through. Um, they're going to wreck our, they're going to wreck our islands. No, it's okay. Bring gifts. No, they're gonna they're gonna go in there. They're gonna go to the bathroom everywhere. I don't even have a toilet on my island. It's it's fire festival over there. It's gonna be terrible. <laughs> um, they're gonna steal my gasoline. It's gonna be. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so you know, you like they had a town dump, and people would just like drop stuff there. And uh, like I've seen people recreate that in this game, and just put a bunch of stuff that's sort of just like take one, like you know, but like be be good about it. Like sort of like when people leave a bucket out on Halloween, it's sort of that like, or that take a penny, leave a penny mantra where mm-hmm. like it's a, it's a system that's designed to not be abused because we hope that there's like a little bit of good in all of us. Um, yeah. I, I, I can't, I honestly cannot imagine this game coming out at a better time right now than, than right now. You know, it's just been, uh, it, it's been such a wonderful thing, like little world to peer into my, my kid's super into it. I wake up in the morning and she's like, Aminals, Aminals, and I turned the game on. I don't know why I made her talk like John Voight, uh, but you know, like then we like immediately we start playing, and it's it's been like it's been such a little slice of joy and a nice little thing to peer into when uh, my phone is just showing me horror stuff all the time, mm-hmm. and people are always like, they got to put more apps on Switch, you know? I want I want I want YouTube on Switch, and I'm like, yeah, it's on there, but like. I don't really want to watch the like the COVID task force video on my Switch when I can I don't know like dig up a peach tree and move it. No, it's it's a vacation. It's great. Exactly. 
so yeah shout All out right. to animal crossing yeah seriously um let's uh let's move on here what do we got lined up next we got some stuff to talk about uh yeah so uh star wars uh the rise of skywalker has now come and gone it's available on digital uh the book is out in case you want to read dlc for a film which has been frustrating as a fan i will say uh that is a movie that i thought i liked when i first saw it and I thought about it, the more I talked about it with you, I think, yeah. and and like the more stories that came out of it, blah 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 blah. I'm not, I don't want to dwell on negativity. We're trying to live in a more positive world right now. All right, there's, but, honestly, there's there's so many other things to be mad about, and I really just can't be that hung no, up on it. You know, no, but, but at this but, point, I just kind of have to throw up my arms and laugh. But um, yeah. And so the interesting thing about this film, if you've been tracking it, is that multiple versions of it written uh and multiple scenes were shot uh that didn't make it into film uh if you saw the movie at the very least whether you liked it or not you could probably uh uh state along with the rest of us that it felt a little sort of frantic and scattered and that maybe at times rushed uh that's because a lot of stuff got left on the cutting room floor uh max tell us about neil scanlon so Neil Scanlon is the head of the uh, Lucasfilm Creature Shop. I've had the pleasure of interviewing him a couple times, and he's like, he's just one of those like magic, like Willy Wonka types. Like the man makes, he makes Star Wars aliens for a living. Like that's his job. He's been doing it his whole life. He worked on like, you know, he started doing like uh, Return to Oz and made those nightmare animals, and now he's just got like, you know, he just, his job is just, you know, some guy comes in and goes, hey, we're gonna have a, a casino scene. We need a uh, two hundred puppets, and he goes, all right then, and gets to work, and uh. You know, some of these wind up being front and center, like, um, you know, Babu Frick or something like that. And then on the other hand, there's entire weird alien contraptions that he and his team build that wind up on the cutting room floor. Uh, one of these uh, popped up in the, I think it was the Rise of Skywalker concept art book and also the novel. And it's the right. Eye of Webbish Bog. Which yeah, is- so this was supposed to be kind of the opening of the film or near it, right? Where Kylo Ren, um, the movie kind of starts off with Kylo Ren like in that forest and it's like he's slashing people up. He was originally supposed to meet this sort of like reverse Yoda. It's a it's a talking spider that lives in a giant baby's head that's submerged in a lake. Yeah, which like, kicks so much ass. And from what, what the interview with Neil said, it sounded like they actually built this thing and it just didn't get put to good use. Uh, so like it theoretically it's out there. It's a thing. Um, and he, he went on this interview to talk about how there's a lot of things that they create that don't necessarily get the screen time that they would like. And they, it's not like they throw them out afterwards. They keep them on hand. Uh, star Wars is a long history of recycling assets basically, or just reusing them. Um, I mean, you know, Greedo gets shot front and center in a new hope. And then there's basically like, it's not Greedo, but it's, it's also, it's totally Greedo walking around right. in Jabba's palace because they had a perfectly good Rodian mask on hand. Uh, and so, like, I'm excited at the thought of seeing some of the weird background characters pop up in new places. And presumably, that's the thing that's going to happen with the Cassian Andor Disney Plus show that actually already happened with uh, The Mandalorian. Um, one of the more infamous omissions from The Force Awakens was a character named Constable Zuvio, who was this sort of, like, alien cop who wore, like, a little sombrero and, like, a doctor's mask and, like... They made action figures, they made Funko Pops, it showed up in a Lego set, uh, there was a short story about him, and then he shows up in The Force Awakens because of how they edit things for literally four seconds, and it's extremely blurry. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, in The Mandalorian, there's a, it, maybe it's not actually Constable Zuvio canonically, but it's like that costume gets used in the background of a bar shot, which is like kind of cool to be like, oh, there's that action figure I bought without knowing that it wouldn't be in the film. Um, so we're going to see more of that for sure. Like Star Wars will reuse new creatures. And I just kind of got together a bunch of uh, examples of other sort of creature scenes that I'd like to see re- ex- you know, reused and explored and mined for new stuff to put, put, in, the, put in front of us. Because I like those nasty alien men. Uh, I agree. <clears throat> for starters, um, the canteen, not the cantina scene, the lodge scene in Solo. Right. Uh, where, they, where they played Sabacc and there was a droid fighting. Uh, they actually, I think we have B-roll of this. They made an w- entire Wendy's commercial in it. Uh, and I realize it's awkward because right now we actually do have ads on IGN for Wendy's, but like I swear this what we weren't put up to this. They just had, mm-hmm. they just had. Uh, yeah, no, that's Rogue One. Alexia, you're playing the wrong clip. That's Rogue One. You got to show the Wendy's commercial. There we go. Yeah, that's Wendy's. Um, um, <laughs> I'm just messing with you, Flex. Um, 
Uh, but yeah, so they basically they made all these ridiculous creatures, and they're like they they show up in you know solo for like a a few seconds, and like it's there used to be this thing where it's like oh this is an excuse for George Lucas to make more action figures, and like they don't even make that many action figures now. No. I just want to see the animals. I want to see the weird animal men in the in the space future. Like show me the film. Show me the show me the nasty things. This guy. Um, Specifically, I've got the image up right here. This guy uh, with the with the many eyes was apparently one of the most complicated things the Creature Shop had ever attempted. They did oh, this wow. like, whole panel at uh, Star Wars Celebration where they were like, they were like, uh, you know, what's the thing you're most proud of? And they, they carted this guy out, and that's a human person wearing a mask, but the mask is covered with like remote control eyeballs, and there's somebody sitting off camera who's like using different levers to make the eyeballs move around separately. And it's like, they, that could have been done with CG easily, but also it's more fun this way. God, that's um, so cool. So presumably that alien species will get a little bit more, you know, a little bit recycled, a little more reused. And we've seen um, we've seen that species as reused, right? Was like his original, like, or one uh, of the first? No, that's, I mean, that's it's all made up, but that's technically a different one. Um, that's something we've no, seen. No, but I, like, I mean, like, stuff. that was like the first, the first, the, the first, like, sort of, like, character in that species that we'd seen before, right? No, this is a totally new one. Like, oh, been, interesting. I, I think they've been making up a lot of new species for the sole purpose of being like, that mask was uncomfortable and the actor couldn't see out of it. So let's make something that they can wear, that we can work with, that isn't like, you know, totally impossible. Um, there's this little guy who was the same race as one of the pod racers. Uh, mm -hmm. There's the Satan was there, which is good. Um, but yeah, like Masconata's Castle is another great example. We've got all these like wonderful costumes. Uh, I read a whole short story about Captain Ethano and his his first mate Quiggled up here on the on the left, and like they're barely in the movie. Um, there's uh, there's Grumgar in the big big giant Bosk, and then that species got reused uh, in Jedi Fallen Order as the uh, second sister, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like it's cool that there are these like weird animals out there. Uh, is my audio kind of crunchy? Oh no, a little bit. I don't know why. We're working on it, folks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know why. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, Psycho 100 on YouTube says the distortion sounds like a Star Wars alien talking in the background. <laughs> That's so weird. Everything was going great before, and now it's not. So, nah, is it's this okay. any better if I get closer? If it's like this, let us know, folks. Um, is that just frightening? Yeah, I'll, I'll say I'll say real quick. Uh, thank you so much for watching, uh, and we're very happy that you're here. Is it me that sounds messed up, or Max that sounds messed up? Is this better? Hmm. Be back in Max's mic. Let me try. Let me put on. Uh... Mick Swiss eighty seven on Twitch says it's cool. You sound like a Star Wars alien. And uh, H definition says McClunky. Does this help, McClunky? Ne wana wanga, ne jabba no bada. <clears throat> Is it good? A little bit better. A little bit better. Yeah, I don't know. We're figuring this out. It's all, it's all, it's all nightmare scenario. I had this whole PowerPoint prepared about animals from space that I was going to talk about. It might actually be you through my speakers. Who knows? We'll that figure it out. That could be it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I Either turned, way, I turned um, you down a whole bunch. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, let's burn through this real quick. So Masconata's Castle, good time, full of like weird aliens they could they could totally pull from. And the fact that they're like they're from different time periods is totally irrelevant because they could just throw like a different dirty cloak on like an existing alien and be like, oh, it's a new character, and it's Cassie Andor's ex girlfriend who's formerly known as Grumgar or what have you. Um, the fact that the Cassie and Andor show will pre presumably be like a little bit more in the Rogue One time period makes me hopeful that we get to see some of like these guys. Like there's Moroff and there's uh, the 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 what is it? Adrio and Benthic Two Tubes, those twins, who those weird dudes from uh, yeah, Eddie, Rogue Eddie One. Two Tubes. Yeah, they're great. Uh, and then of course there's Bistan, one of my favorites, one of the good guys in, in the Rogue One. Everyone loves Bistan. Who doesn't love Bistan? You like to look at look at this man. He's got big eyebrows. He looks He's beautiful. honestly one of my favorite. Like he, there was that. We, you and I were laughing about how there's that one scene in Rise of Skywalker where they're working on the Knights of Ren, and there's just like an actual monkey. <laughs> We'll, do, we'll be talking about that that space chimp soon enough. We've got we will. Of, we do. But uh, yeah, so Bistan's great. I actually have some more images of Bistan here. There's actually a Lego <laughs> minifig of Bistan. Brian, I need you to take a look at this real quick. <laughs> but hold on. Let me get, let me get just real. Let's just get. Oh, there, look at that. Get in there. That's, look at that. Is that, the, is that the ugliest Lego minifig ever made? 
It might be. I think, oh my God. Doesn't he, he yeah, looks right? like that, you know that old man on the computer meme, like the, the stock photo? It's terrible. It <laughs> looks like, awful. Let's put those decals on there. Uh, and everyone hates Canto Bite. It's one of the many things that people get mad at at The Last Jedi for. But, like, there's a bunch of great puppets in there. And that they could totally just, you know, maybe make them dress less like they're at the Oscars and then do stuff with them. It's just, I don't know. It, the, the idea that there's, like, a warehouse somewhere that's, like, full of these nightmare things. And that they're like, yeah, we're making another TV show. Might as well dust some of these guys off. That's yeah. good news. This guy was in a deleted scene for The Last Jedi. And he was actually played by Warwick Davis, who played... You know, so many other like little characters in Star Wars. Um, it's one of the weirdest things during that that horse chase scene that everyone doesn't like. Um, he falls off a massage table and he's just lying there bare assed and naked on the floor. And Not only that, but they, it's like a drone shot that like zooms in on his bare pink ass. Yeah. And then Finn just goes. And it's like, I was like, well, I, I understand why they deleted it. But also, like, I think more people need to see that bare pink ass. I think this character needs to get like, right? more, this, more this screen dude time. Looks- he looks like a villain from like, or a bad guy from like Kid Icarus or something. He's all horrible. Um, <clears throat> he looks like the Kaka Demon from Doom, actually, but like a not scary version. Oh, like a baby, like a baby Kaka Demon. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, and then of course there's the these guys. There's the 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 cows that live in the ocean that Luke Skywalker milks. I mean, like they. I did an interview with Neil Scanlon where he talked about how they brought this thing to life, and there's like five people operating this at once. It's like a submarine where like the head cracks open and a bunch of people climb inside and they're like squeezing milk through these fake teats. And they had to build, they had to build this thing. And it's like, if you think that's stupid, that's how they make most of the things in star Wars. Job of the hut was like 10 dudes hiding in a big latex sleeping bag. Yeah. Like, it's just it, the fact that these things exist out there and that they're like, yeah, I guess we'll use them again. I just no, I, I want to see more of that. I'm actually tempted to get that. There's that like, uh, there's that like sort of production sketch of like the nine dudes inside of Jabba the Hutt, and there's like four underneath, and there's like five inside, and one of them's just like that with his arm out. I'm like tempted to get that printed in frame because it's like so, it's so stupid. It's so um, weird. <clears throat> anyway, um, before we move on, uh, apparently my island crashed, so I just want to say here's my new code. It's uh. Bo- Begotten, <laughs> B-H-G-T-N. Big, huge so. guys talking nasty. Welcome to <laughs> Up at Noon. Yeah, come on through to Big, Huge Guys Talking Nasty here on Up at Noon. Uh, uh, Max, man, I miss doing the show. It's so yeah, much right? fun. And also, like, we should probably have a two-hour show. We pre- prepared way too many things. There's some stuff we might have to skip over, I think. We were, like, uh, 15 minutes late, and I think everybody at IGN went home, so, like, we can, I don't know, we can go a few minutes over. Flex, you want to hang out a little bit? Are you cool with that? All right. So you, 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 going, you going anywhere tonight? You going to like a concert or something? <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. We're, yeah, you're st- we're not stuck here with you. You're stuck here with us. <laughs> um, hey, Max, let's talk about the Knights of Ren. Oh, boy. Okay, so um, if you haven't seen The Rise of Skywalker, uh, I feel like if you really wanted to see it, you would have seen it by now. And if you really want to see it and you haven't seen it yet, it's, uh, it's available on digital download, on demand, or what have you. Um, that being said, we might we may spoil some things here in the next conversation that we're about to have about the Knights of Ren. If you're familiar with the Star Wars sequel trilogy, you're aware that the Knights of Ren showed up for one thrilling <coughs> moment in The Force Awakens in a like a flashback sequence. And you could almost see them and we were all like, oh my God, they're so cool. They're so they're such badasses. Look at them all. They're great. They're amazing. Look at them. Right. And we were, do you remember like that was such an incredible time period for Star Wars fans? Because we were like, we were looking through uh like uh, screenshots and stills and we were looking at the trailers and is that boba fett back there yeah we're like we're like going into photoshop and like enhancing it we're like the second it comes out on blu-ray we're gonna get in there we're gonna find it or not even that we're like when this comes out in theaters we're gonna finally find this shot was in the trailer we're like yes cannot wait to see who these knights of ren are what they're up to why does kylo a knight of ren is he but his ren is also his last name are they all is their last name all ren it's weird and i know that there's totally like expanded or not expanded there's there's lore that explains all this but i want to just point out at face value if you were expecting big things from the knights of ren you got so let down <laughs> to the point that it's honestly i just have to laugh about it because what else are you gonna do 
So yeah. if you're you know, you're looking for them in the Last Jedi, they just they weren't there. So we're not even going to talk about that. They didn't do they didn't do anything. They weren't there. That's nothing. Yeah, gone. Yeah, whatever. I will say um, one of the only positive things about the Knights of Ren is that um, I think they all worked at convention back when we had those. Um, not in costume, but out of costume. And like those five or six or nine people, whoever many there are, I forget, were all standing around, and one of them was wearing a Wu Tang shirt. And I just want to say that's really cool. That's good. Yeah, but in in the movie now we can continue. Not, so they showed up <laughs> in in the Rise of Skywalker, and the first thing they did was literally stand around and watch Kylo Ren as he watched a chimpanzee fix his old mask. Yeah, which is like, I mean, that's like a cool. That's like if you had nine of your best friends go with you to the Verizon store to get your screen replaced or to get like a new iPhone traded in. If you were like, oh yeah. no, I got to go run an errand. Yeah, well, I didn't have anything planned. Right? Like, if all if all your cousins came with you to the malls so you could shop at Lids? <laughs> That's, like, yeah. I Yeah, like, I also, like, w- do you think that space chimpanzee could maybe have been, like, you guys mind waiting outside? It's actually kind of crowded in here in my dark workshop while I'm welding with, like, a... a <laughs> <laughs> apparently a car cd player stuck to his face so. also there there are a lot of inventive aliens in star wars this is just a monkey that's just a monkey it's not like yoda <laughs> just ears it's just a chimpanzee <laughs> right so anyway this, this movie made a billion dollars and this is, has such a like the, one of the longest histories of like original characters iconic like Right, right behind me, right? There's like, there's a Dubak, there's Yoda, there's Bosk, there's Ponda Baba, there's Salacious Crumb, right? I mean, you just and, described like three dinosaurs and two frogs. That's kind of like, it's fine that they are, yeah. you know, are derivative, but that is just a chimpanzee. It's just a, a chimpanzee. Yeah. yeah. With like an Alpine CD player where it wore his glasses. Anyway, <laughs> uh, it's hard to find a clear image of their ship. It's actually kind of a cool design. It reminds me a little bit of the Moldy Crow from Dark Forces. But it's just it's all it, they they just fly around in it from point A to point B. They don't do any space fights. They just kind of like they just go. Rrr. The funny thing about it though is that it has a bad muffler, which doesn't make any sense even by Star Wars standards. <laughs> I I, I kind of like that because it's so aggressively stupid. Because like there's no, I don't think I don't know I don't I don't know what science is, but I don't <laughs> think you can have a broken muffler in space that makes your car your space car go like. Rrr, rrr, rrr. And also. If that were a thing that could exist in Star Wars, don't you think the Millennium Falcon would have had it already? Oh God, yeah, it had it had every single problem that a car could possibly have. It was built in the seventies, right? Yeah. No, I mean it's amazing that the Millennium, uh, Millennium Falcon didn't have bees in it. Uh, by yeah. the way, uh, Rico Crew on YouTube says, "What's Brian's code?" That's it. There's like seventy people in there with uh, COVID masks right now, so tread <laughs> tread carefully. Um, but yeah, man, the the night to so, run. Which is speaking keep of them, going, keep going. Speaking of them being dirty dudes, one of my favorite things is um, we're running a little behind. Um, one of my favorite things is they uh, they they tr- they tread dirt through the Star Destroyer hallway, which is like it's kind of funny. You think of Star Wars like it's iconic because it was one of the first like sci fi movies that was like, oh, it's it's dirty. Everything's dirty. It's all nasty out there. The first Star Wars is so grimy. It's all used future. It's wonderful. But you'd think that at some point, maybe somebody would have gotten some of that dirt in some of the clean places. And this is the first time we see it. it took them like, what, like 11 movies to get to the point where somebody just gets dirt in there, which I kind of yeah. love because it's like, it's also like to sort of be like, how do you establish these guys are some real rude, bad dudes? Well, they don't wipe their feet and the mouse droids have to clean it up. So then they show up and we're like, all right, time for them to be badass. What are they going to do? And they stand on a mountain like they're in a music video. And it just and like the camera goes around and you're like, OK, I guess you're doing a, an original song for the Scorpion King soundtrack. That's right. right. You, you badasses. Look at you guys go. <laughs> Look at that Slipknot deleted video over It's here. honest. It's just Slipknot. But in Star Wars. <laughs> you know, uh, four and of it, these guys are drummers. Those are actually just they use those for drumming. <laughs> I love I love it so much because it's like it's it's I, I was so like, all right, what are they going to do? And then it's just like, well, all right. Uh, and then, you know, we're getting to spoiler territories. So if you haven't seen the movie and you, and you do want to see it, you've had a lot of time to see it and it, you can go see it right now. And if you don't care, then just stick around. But they catch Chewbacca. Uh huh. But they do it off screen and you never see it happen. So they just, <laughs> you see them like creeping around like Wiley e. Coyote behind a giant rock. And then the next scene, they're just like, they're going through his bag. Like he got, 
you know, like pulled over by like the yard yard duty on campus, and they're like, "Where'd you go?" What do you, you know, What do you think place. they found in his bag? Like <laughs> tuna sandwiches. Like, I don't. What does yeah. Chewbacca keep in his backpack? Honestly, I mean, you know, bow, bowcaster quarrels, repair tools, and stuff. But like, <laughs> I don't know. I just love that. Like, this shot is like this is like something from Cops. It's actually really funny out of context, where it's like. Like, if you didn't know who the Knights of Ren were, this honestly looks like there was like a weird, uh, like a weird disagreement, and that they like arrested Chewbacca. These other guys were like, "Yeah, he was. He tried to. He's trying to start something with us. And I think he has a knife on him." They're like, "Well, look, we found a knife. This is it." Anyway, yeah. So if you if you have seen the movie, you know what happens after that. If you've seen any movie where like a bunch of bad guys in it that is deemed as a conclusion to something, you probably know what happens. But uh, yeah, big spoilers. They all they all just die. <laughs> that's it that's all that's all that i'm not yet much for that because it's like wasn't worth the trouble they just it's like we waited we waited for like five years to be like who are these mysterious masked men what sort of badass adventures are they going to go on to what kind of kick-ass stuff are they going to do and then they didn't do anything they didn't, they didn't do they, anything at all they showed up they went they watched their friend run an errand they did something off camera they stood on a rock and then they they died and honestly uh, I, As I a Boba to... Fett fan, I love them. I'm a huge fan oh, of God, the Knights yeah. of Ren. I gotta say, the Knights are the best new Star Wars characters ever. Great. Read the comic. You gotta get. You gotta read the comics when they're in middle school. Uh, we got a couple uh, comments here on Twitch. Uh, let's see. Um, Bacon Fantasy says Chewie probably has some dirty Ewok magazines. I bet he's got like a crinkled old photo of Maz Kanata. And uh, Mick Swiss eighty seven says there's so much weed in Chewie's bag. I think so. Yeah, I feel like he just eats it though. You know, like I don't think he would he would be one to even do smoky apparatuses. He would just be like, oh, just eat like well, a giant. Yeah, well, I mean, wouldn't that wouldn't that chill him out? Because he's not really like a. Well, I mean, I don't know. He's kind of like half chill. But yeah, they they fight Kylo Ren at the end. Also, I want to give a shout out to uh, I Byzantium on Twitch. Um, he came through my town and Tom Nook is selling a golf bag in Animal Crossing today for 54,000 bells. And he said he didn't bring enough money for it. Tom Nook is, is really weird like that. Cause like, he'll, or his kids will sell you a couch for like two grand, but then also be like, Oh, you want a golf bag? It's, you know, it's the price of a Tesla. <laughs> I don't get that. That's, yeah. I mean, that is also like golf stuff is expensive and Tom Nook is, is a golfer. You can see his little like putting range set up there. Max, it's, it's also, been uh, we we've done quite a long show so far, and we haven't talked about action figures yet. Aside from uh, right. a little tertiary uh, connection to some stuff that we talked about with Star Wars, uh, so let's talk about some McFarlane action figures that we got. Yeah, if the uh, if the entire setup breaks right now, that's uh, we didn't. It's possible it will, but let's see what happens. Hey, it's Spawn! It's Spawn and friends. Um, yeah. So. Uh, McFarland Toys has been making toys since the, the dawn of time, or 1991, whichever. Uh, 1994, I think. The comics were 91. Um, but yeah, they just got, uh, they got Spawn in Mortal Kombat, and to celebrate, they decided to put Spawn from Mortal Kombat in the Mortal Kombat action figure line, and uh, it makes me happy, because Spawn is great. He's a, he's, he's a Navy SEAL who dies and goes to hell and comes back to avenge his own death, and is also an agent of satan but he's also <laughs> fights i don't know spawn is spawn is such like it's such a perfect pairing with mortal Kombat. like i feel like mortal Kombat, spawn and doom are all cousins in that they are things oh god that, yeah. like if you were if you were like between the ages of like i don't know seven and 17 in 1995 you were like these things are undeniably cool and they kick so much ass and now you know Decades later, they still kick tons of ass, and there's still tons of them, and it's great. It makes me very happy. Um, yeah, something that's cool about this, we've gotten a few Mortal Kombat figures. Uh, I think we've talked about them maybe on this show before. I can't remember. The show got canceled like three times. Who knows? Um, I was actually yeah. talking to my wife about that today. This is the this currently, whatever it is that we're doing, is essentially the sixth iteration of Up at Noon. That's, that's nonsense. That's I know. That's apples. Who Please signed up on that? Um, so, okay, so we got Scorpion here. Um, I had this figure before, I think I, we did like an unboxing of it, and like, it's, it looks great, it is 
weirdly brittle and like kind of fussy to play with getting these little like uh sheets on his belt is like a pain in the ass and i think for like sort of the second wave that comes out with all the spawn stuff they actually kind of step things up because they gave me this like this alternate design scorpion who's just like a better it's just a better figure i don't really like that he looks like he's um i don't know he's got like a thanksgiving motif going you know like he's got sort of like a pumpkin pie like seasonal <laughs> gourds look to him but uh it's, yeah, he is very. Or- he's he's got a lot of orange going on. Um, yeah, but he com- he comes with his chain and two katanas, which like totally kicks ass. Yeah, and yeah, uh, all these toys come with stands, right? Yeah, they all come with stands. McFarlane's good about that. Uh, and this one I think is my favorite from the whole line, which is Johnny Cage. Uh, except he comes with an action figure of himself, which is absolutely and a, nonsense. And, a, and and what is that like an Emmy? It's like a bootleg Oscar. It's like the award for excellence in acting. Uh, oh, it's so, so good. So, so funny. Um, and it's like, it's, I think it's Johnny Cage from Mortal Kombat 10 or 9. I can't, I, or just like a different, a different skin, I guess. But yeah, he's got his like, he's basically got your shoes on. He's got just big old high tops. Yeah. Dirt bike pads for no reason. <laughs> he's got his own like branded logo. Like he looks like, he looks like an esports dude, basically. I love it. Yeah, his uh, wrestling his little, jacket little sunglasses can come off and he he looks you know he looks all right underneath it's kind of yeah, like that is a great Bateman. toy you you and i back in the in the before times uh did an unboxing of a bunch of um mcfarlane uh dc stuff and i feel like this this whole line is like on a whole nother level a lot of other stuff that that people are doing right now that's yeah, awesome i i think they so this is this is raiden like the vengeful mercenary guardian or something it's like some weird you know special code name but basically he's got it's all this nonsense lightning and stuff and he's got this big wizard staff and it's just just a fun toy it's just a good time um I, I shot a separate unboxing of all these that i'll put up on ign if you want to take a closer look but basically uh big thanks to mcfarland for sending these over and also it just makes me happy that there's like a new spawn action figure in 2020 because literally nothing else has gone right you know <laughs> spawn Exactly. Spawn and Animal Crossing. That's all we need. Do you want to talk about the Sub Zeros real quick? Yeah, we can. We can talk about them. Uh, so the Sub Zero, there's the sort of main one, which again came out, I think, in the first wave, and it's it's a, it's a little bit of a like a fussy figure. It's like kind of hard to pose. He's got a skull, so he can pretend he's Predator, but he's really Sub Zero. But then there's the newer version, which is like the alternate color scheme, where he looks like he is, uh, I don't know, like he actually froze himself. You know. Mm-hmm. which is weird but he's you know he's an ice man and uh i'm not i'm never wild about variant color schemes where they just paint the entire thing one color but at least this has like a nice kind of dry brush effect and he looks like he's actually covered in ice uh, but this was like yeah. it's way more poseable it's like it's it's just the joints are they're either yeah, he, he sort of look like looks like uh like force ghost sub-zero i like that idea like yeah. Force Ghost or like sub-zero comes back from the dead and he's like hey don't th- uh, also, I, yeah, it's you, you do you do kind of need the stands like they're you can you can make some good poses here, but they're 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 fussy they're fussy figures. Um, but yeah, that's that. Those those guys are out right now. They're twenty bucks a pop. Um, they are still available on various websites where they will deliver things to your house if you're so inclined to order them. Uh, I also I did uh, I did an unboxing recently. This is a this is a quarter scale human. Good um, God. Yeah, and so this is a highly poseable. Comes with a couple of accessories, such as this book, which is if you give a mouse a cookie, um, articulated hair, which you can pose and put in different directions, and then there's um, she's got like uh, alternate dinosaur outfits and clothes. Even. Can you say hi? Huh? <laughs> kind of lacking in action features there. Uh. <laughs> Okay, so I actually have a special surprise. Let's see it. Um, I actually made you your your birthday was yesterday. Yes. We didn't we didn't talk about that on the show. We we're gonna talk about it, but we got excited about Animal Crossing. I actually have a present that I've been working on for quite some time. Really? Um, yeah, I made a you remember that, that ATST that Chris and Vanyar knocked off your desk and it exploded? <laughs> and she got you a different one that sucked. Oh I mean, my god! I've been working on this for a little while. I just throwing dirt and stuff on there, dude. That's really the just... freaking yeah. best. And I was so excited to give it to you, and then the world ended. So, oh well. Wait, um, is that is that the same? Was that the same kit? 
Uh, this is the this is the old eighties kit. Yeah, I fixed it up a bunch and it just oh kind of made. Oh my it. god! Yeah, uh, and there's Max, actually that's something the, else. That's the freaking best. That's that's not all though, because also there's another special birthday that happened this week, which is Bloodborne. Bloodborne turned five, so I made you a Bloodborne themed cake. <laughs> Happy birthday, man. Oh Glad we're doing this stupid show again. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. So yeah, it's got the oh little... Uh, they got those little bath messengers. It's covered in blood. Do you know how hard it is to make frosting look this gross? Where did you get all this stuff? I, I don't know. I've been stuck around the, the house, man. Like, I didn't have <laughs> much else to do. Um, I don't know how to blow out candles over a webcam. I'm just going to, like... Here, watch. Here, I'll, I'll try. Hold on. You ready? One, two, three. Oh, you missed one. You have bad luck. Um, yeah, happy birthday, <laughs> dude. That actually looks more Bloodborne with smoke coming out of it. Look at those little guys. They're hor- That's horrible, right? I'm tearing up, man. Yeah. Happy birthday, dude. I'm glad we're doing this stupid show. And, uh, oh, man. Thanks, Max. Uh, I love you. To that... cry. I love you, too, man. Oh, man. Cheers. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, if you're just tuning in, this is probably a weird time to come to the show. But you know, that's kind of what we're doing the show for. We're just you may you may be two friends you hanging out at my job. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. How? Okay, hold on. What? How did? What did you make those? What did you make those little ghoulie boys out of? Marzipan. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah, they're uh, they're hard. I took like it's it's weird because all like all the food colorings are made to be like you know they're designed to look cute and nice and happy and Bloodborne doesn't literally doesn't have those colors. Where uh, where did you where did you get marzipan during all this stuff? Um, I I had it. I just had it in my cupboard <laughs> for some reason. I don't know why I had marzipan. I've uh, never. So can I ask you a question? Because I've never. I like I grew up in an Italian house, household, so I'm very familiar with marzipan and or marzipan in its final form which is usually just like ornate Freezer. fruits yeah but final i course, i don't yeah yeah i i don't usually i've never seen it in the raw like is it just a block does it show up like sculpting? It's, it it's actually the worst thing you can imagine it it looks like uh like a um it looks like a like a manila envelope colored sausage that's wrapped in like silver mylar <laughs> it's it's on you feel like you're it, it's like you're like is this i think it's actually how they package heroin i don't know but it's it's definitely it's definitely gross so where um, did you where did you get the did you get the cake and in- we had uh, dude i swear to god i cleaned out my pantry and there was just like i think i don't i don't know i think there were like plans to do birthday stuff that just never came to fruition like years ago and i was like well, i don't need this funfetti layout. it's also it's a funfetti cake so, so the, which is like I feel like the least bloodborne of cakes. <laughs> I would go with like a red velvet or like a black forest double dark chocolate, but no, it's I, actually like I, an angel food funfetti. I was gonna say because I don't, I don't know if they're doing, they're not doing like you, I, you can't, can you buy go buy a cake right now like at the supermarket? I kind of doubt it because those are all things that have to make like on hand. So I have like one of the, if I was like you know in Animal Crossing, this would be a rare item to sell. If anyone want, would want this awful, awful cake, horrible, horrible bloodborne cake. This is this is one of the most amazing things. You're, I love you so much, Max. I'm I'm so happy we're friends. This is one of the most amazing things anyone's ever made for me. And the fact that it's it's nestled between like a collapsed Sub Zero toy and the the body hair of that awful monkey. Oh, <laughs> that blanket. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> i'm so glad we're doing this show i hope we get to keep doing this yeah i mean, I mean it's weird because like we've just got yeah i mean the, i think there's no cops anymore so maybe we can keep doing the show but you know our i want i want to say thank you to uh jeremy acevedo who's both of our bosses max you put out a tweet the other day saying you know should we do the show again should we bring something like this back and he said go for it and that like honestly it completely made my day uh and the fact that we get to do this again is the best thing in the world. So I think we should probably, do you want to move on to a couple stories that might make everyone regret that we, that we're even doing this? Why don't we save them? Okay. We'll save them. We'll save them. Let's save them. Let's, let's, let's wrap things up. Let's end on a high note, but uh, okay. Let's end on a high note. 
Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching Up at Noon Live, the glorious return. Uh, it had uh, pretty Fiji's much... Fiji's number one daytime talk show. Yeah, the number one show in Fiji, which is about 70 or 140,000 islands that come together. The number one show in Fiji besides Elf Bowling, the series. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. Yeah, uh, if if you like the show, uh, please uh, tweet at IGN and tell them to keep making it. Uh, I think we're gonna keep making it. I, th I think this this felt right. Um, and uh, if you're uh, on quarantine right now or you're dealing with stress from the universe, uh, I hope we could provide just a, a little bit of time to escape from all that. Um, this has uh, been a weird time for everybody. It's it breaks my heart that I can't like run across the room and give Max a big hug after he made me a bloodborne birthday cake which is one of the sweetest things anyone's ever done and painted an atst and now like i the the bar is too high i i at least have a couple of months to figure out what to do for your birthday but jesus man. i think i forgot yours like a few years and you're always like i don't like birthdays and i was like yeah well i'll show you <laughs> uh so yeah uh thank you so much for watching uh to everybody on ign on youtube on twitch on Mixer, uh, to all of your families at home, to all of your loved ones. I hope you're getting through this weird dark time, and I hope we can be here for you and keep making bizarre, stupid nonsense shows uh, to take our mind off of all of it. Um, and yeah, if you came through our Animal Crossing towns today, uh, thank you. We'll probably keep the gates open for a little while longer. Uh, and um, yeah, follow us on Twitter. Max is at Max Scoville. I'm at Agent Bizzle, and uh, you can find everything we do on IGN.com. And we do tons of shows every single week. You probably know about them by now. Nintendo Voice Chat, Podcast Beyond, everything. Uh, uh, this has been very odd for us to sort of be, you know, all of a sudden move into this new world. But I'm really, really happy we got to keep doing what we're yeah. doing. And Any final big words, Max? Huge, big, huge, and special thanks to Alexio, who uh, stayed late at the office, which is, I guess is his house. But it's still, it's late. It's making someone stay late on a Friday. But he's been, you know, switching between our, our things and... and uh, next time I expect to have more transparent hot dogs floating around the screen. I think that that's the thing we need to work on. Um, work on that. No problem. <laughs> he says he can work on that. That's good. I like that. Okay. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching everybody. Thank Remember you guys Ryan. so much for watching and, uh, we'll, we'll hopefully see you very soon. Bye. <laughs>